you start to get prompted to call certain people or visit certain people, and after the phone call or after the visit or whatever, you feel energized, you feel a sense of vitality, a sense of joy and happiness and lightness, then obviously the prompt came from the Holy Spirit. You listened, you followed, and you got the experience. If you find yourself being depressed, feeling um, fatigued, uh, you feel very dispirited, you know, you feel like, wow, I got, I'm glad I got that over with. Uh, any kind of those kind of feelings, then, it, then the, the prompts are coming in from guilt. Out of habitual, you, you haven't called so-and-so for a while, uh, you might, all these relationships that we start off with, so to speak, and formulate during our life are, there's guilt in them. They're, they're still, even though they have their good times, they have their bad times and their guilt. So now the Holy Spirit is saying, okay, the way out of this is, it's like a fresh start, you know. It's like actually going inside and thinking about all these people. You can think about that woman in particular and these other people. And literally handing them over to the Holy Spirit and saying, you know what's best for them. I, I'm not going to keep taking the responsibility for their happiness and their welfare on myself. I give them over to you. And uh, also, you want to inspire me to have guilt-free relationships. And, and those are the symbols that come to you when you're open and serving the Holy Spirit. You get witnesses of that love and that openness. I mean, it's gone for me from being a very shy child, I was shy all the way through grade school, junior high, high school, shy all the way through university. Uh, most of the 10 years of university I was very shy. And then suddenly, you know, I finished those 10 years of university, A Course in Miracles comes into my life, and I start going to, after two or three years of reading it just on my own, and, and listening to Jesus and the Holy Spirit, I started going to groups, I started opening my heart up, and I start being ego frightened, like, whoa, this is really threatening. After all those years of quiet and shy and isolating, suddenly it was like, like the floodgates were opening up in a hurry. And then as I just went with it over the years, that was probably, I started traveling about 1991, so that's about 17 years now. Oh yeah, I, I've just let the Holy Spirit bring me floods of witnesses of, of love and joining and laughter and happiness in 21 different countries. So the floodgates more than opened up. <laughs> the flood came and it kind of cleared away these things. And the things that most people go through, I mean, people will talk to me and they'll say, well, I've got to go to my, my 25th high school reunion or things like church classmates, church mates, childhood friends, and all, all those kind of things that most people deal with that, that involve a certain amount of guilt. Uh, those are gone from my life. I mean, my friends, they're all like vibrational friendships. Mm -hmm. That's how I know them, is through this vibration. Mm -hmm. We were literally brought together by the Holy Spirit, and those relationships are just flourishing and, and multiplying. It's like, a, like flowers in a the garden. They're just blooming and blooming and blooming. There's more seeds, and there are more and more and more. And if somebody said, would say to me, when was the last time that you saw or talked to like a classmate of yours that you went to school with? And I'm like, what? I can't even, uh, I don't even have a, a space in my memory for that. It's probably decades, uh, actually. Uh, but what about your, your church that you grew up in? I mean, what about those people there? I was back there once, but the Holy Spirit came ripping through, and it was a very mystical experience, but it had a lot of the people that I had known were going on, and there's not a lot of continuity in those kind of ways. Um, even in spirituality, if somebody took did a time-lapse photography of this peace house that I founded back in 1996, you would see all these different characters coming and going, and including this body, as I was off on travels, you would just see a time-lapse photography, like a collage of all these different people. It wouldn't be like of one person or two or three that are there. The faces have changed so much. Even in my work with The Course in Miracles, the faces have changed. And in fact, since about 1998, 
the only things that have been stable at that house have been my two cats. And I get more into the purpose, and you, you put less faith in the appearances, you know. It's like, you're ready, you're open the door, and who's, whoever's at the door, you're going to greet them with joy. Mm -hmm. uh, the phone rings, and you, you speak with happiness and joy. Uh, whether you seem to have a history or not, um, it doesn't really matter, you know. It's like you're in the purpose of, with the Holy Spirit, Jesus there. So, it's very welcoming, very loving, and, uh, and also when you're with people, it feels like you've known them forever. Like you just, you know, you've known each other forever. Even if you just met, you know, for two or three minutes, you know, always there's this strong feeling of, of recognition. Like, I know you. Oh yeah, I remember <laughs> you. And it's very strong. It just becomes stronger and stronger. And you learn to let go of the other stuff. I mean, um, I always have had the philosophy that everything is either a miracle or a miracle waiting to happen. So there's no room for grievances or uh, lost souls or whatever. I mean, if, as I've gone on in my pathway of joy, I just have a, a, like a joy surrounding me all the time. And it's like that Charlie Brown character, Pink Pen. You know, where pink pen is always dirty, and there's always a big puff of <laughs> dirt falling. I'm kind of in a cloud of joy, so there's a cloud of joy around me. And, and anyone or anything that, that seems to be not a part of that joy, they really can't even get very close to me. It's almost like they can't penetrate the cloud of joy. There was, there was some guy one time who was, who was a very kind of a threatening, menacing kind of character in the world's terms leaving mess voice messages and saying kind of like, when you get down here to Florida, I'm gonna, I'll meet you out in the parking lot. Like he's gonna beat me up in the parking lot or something <laughs> like this. And people around me were like, what, are you afraid? And I said, afraid? What do you mean? We got down to this Harmony Church, we were in the parking lot where he was making all of his threats that he was gonna, gonna do harm and everything. And I had people would travel for states to come and see me and we just had the biggest hub fest in the parking lot of Harmony Church, and then we had a glorious gathering. And I said, yeah, that's the way it's kind of like this big cloud of joy that, that uh, they said he was revving his motorcycle out of the parking lot after we were talking. And it's like, yeah, I kind of remember something, but I can't, it's like it doesn't even reach my awareness anymore. Because you get into the state of joy, and then you see a joyful world, and you don't have Hector, she certainly don't have any enemies. Uh, like Jesus teaches, you know, if you if you believe you have an enemy, you have a great need of prayer. You have to pluck the enemy out of your own mind. It's not like there are really external enemies, but they're they're enemies in consciousness. When we have grievances that we hold on to, those are the enemies. We just have to pluck them out and hand it over to the Holy Spirit. So I find that. Uh, yeah, a lot of the people that I seem to have interacted with through the early years of the parable of David have disappeared. It's almost like they disappeared and they were never there. Uh, and I certainly don't feel any guilt. Uh, I've got such a full life of joy that I'm not even thinking it. And when people would even say to me, oh, have you, have you seen so-and-so? Whatever happened to so-and-so? You know, those kind of questions. <laughs> and, they, and where is so-and-so? They come up to you and you have a, talked or spoken to the person maybe for three decades and they come up and they say, where is so and so? They say, they're in my mind. How are they doing? They're doing great. Uh, because you start to realize that your mind is everything and that everything and everyone is in your mind. And of course, if you're doing great, that means they're doing great. And you can answer with confidence. Even if you haven't spoken to them for three decades, you know that they're doing great. Are they still alive? I guess so. I'm alive <laughs> uh, in the spirit. You know, all those things that seem important in the world, where are they living, how their life is going, are they living, can they pass on, you know, just those things all disappear. And there's no guilt. <laughs>